In this problem, we have a region that is bounded by these graphs, and we have to rotate it about the x-axis, and then find the volume of the resulting solid using the shell method. So first, it's good to think about what these graphs look like. So the square root of x plus 30 is the square root function shifted to the left 30 units. So it looks something like this. And then y equals x uh, looks something like this. And then y equals 0 is a horizontal line. So we basically have this, this region here. Now, in order to get a perfect graph or a better graph, we should try to find out where these graphs intersect. So to do that, we can set them equal to each other. So we have the square root of x plus 30, and we set that equal to x. To solve for x, we square both sides. So I'm going to square the left side and square the right side. That makes the square root go away. So we get x plus 30 equals x squared. This is a quadratic equation. To solve quadratic equations, you set them equal to 0. So we'll subtract x and subtract 30. So we have x squared minus x minus 30, and this is equal to 0. Let's try to factor this. So this is x, x, and this is equal to 0. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 30. So 6 and 5 seem to be pretty good. And they have to add to negative 1, so we'll make the 6 negative and the 5 positive. That will give us two possible answers, 6 and negative 5. Graphically, we can see that the negative 5 is not a good solution. So the answer we want is 6, right? Negative 5 is like over here, so there's no intersection point there. So let's go ahead and draw our graph and make it a little bit better and a little bit bigger. So here's the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And then let's say that here is negative 30. It won't be drawn to scale, this picture. And then here is the square root of x plus 30. And then here is y equals x. And we know that this is 6. And we know that this is negative 30. It might be good to know what the y value is here. This y value here is also 6. And I know that because if you plug in 6 to y equals x, you get 6. Right? You just get y equals 6. Likewise, if you plug it in here, you get 6 plus 30, plus 30, so you get 36. The square root of 36 is 6. Okay, and we're spinning it here. So when we're using the shell method, your rectangles are always parallel to the axis. Remember, shell, parallel, shell, parallel. So let's go ahead and draw our rectangle. So because we have a horizontal rectangle, we have functions of y. So we have to take this function of x, y equals the square root of x plus 30, and solve it for x. So we'll square both sides. So you get y squared equals x plus 30. And then subtracting 30, that's going to give us x equals y squared minus 30. So this is a function of y. So that's this function up here. This is x equals y squared minus 30. Okay, so we have to find two things here. We have to find h and p. Since we have horizontal rectangles, it's a function of y. So h is the height of the rectangle. So this will be our h of y. P of y is the distance from the skinny part of the rectangle to the axis of revolution. So this is where P of y would be. We're going to be integrating with respect to y. So P of y is just going to be y. It's just the distance. It's just this vertical distance, and it's going to go from 0 to 6. So it's simply y. H of y is the length or height of this rectangle. Remember, when you have horizontal rectangles, you want to think about right minus left. So this one here is x equals y. So h of y 
it's right minus left. So it's y minus parentheses y squared minus 30. Right minus left. It's x equals y minus x equals y squared minus 30, right? Right minus left. If that's confusing, think, think simple. Pretend it was 4 and 1, and you had a rectangle here. Think of this as x equals 4 and x equals 1. x equals 4 minus x equals 1 is x equals 3, which is the height or length of the rectangle. Same thing here. It's x equals y minus x equals this one, which is y squared minus 30. We can distribute the negative here. So h of y is y minus y squared and then plus 30. Okay, let's go ahead and write down the integral that gives us the volume. So v, so the shell has the 2 pi. And we're integrating with respect to y. So we're going from 0 to 6, so from the bottom up. And it's p times h. So it's y times and then y minus y squared plus 30 and then dy. So this is equal to 2 pi times the definite integral from 0 to 6. Let's go ahead and distribute that y. So y squared minus y cubed plus 30y. And then we have our dy here. Let's just double check that. y times y is y squared. y times y squared is y cubed. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and integrate. I'll leave the 2 pi on the outside. So 2 pi bracket. We can use the power rule, so it'll be y cubed over 3 minus this next one will be y to the 4 over 4. And then integrating 30y is going to give us 30y squared over 2. So that's really 15y squared. Okay, so 15y squared because 30 over 2 is 15. And we're going from 0 to 6. So we have 2 pi. We plug in the 6, so we get 6 cubed over 3 minus 6 to the 4 over 4 plus 15 times 6 squared minus, and then you plug in 0 and you just get 0. So this is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the calculator, and I'm going to show you how to put it in the calculator. I have one here. Yes, yes, I do. Okay, so let's do it. So we have 6 cubed over 3 minus 6 to the 4th over 4 plus 15 times 6 squared, which is 36. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. That's 288. And then that's being multiplied by 2 pi, so times 2. That's 576 pi. So the answer to this problem should be 576 pi. Kind of a nice problem, a definitely more challenging problem because of the horizontal rectangle. I hope this video has been helpful.